Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Wanderers of Time by John Wyndham. This is him writing as John Bennion, sorry, John Bainan, uh, which was his pen name. It's a collection of short stories. It contains Before the Triffids, which is a short introduction, Wanderers of Time, Derelict of Space, Child of Power, The Last Lunarians, and The Puffball Menace. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then we're going to go through it and check out some of my tabs. I will admit there aren't that many, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Wanderers of Time. John Wyndham wrote strong imaginative fiction years before fame came his way, and this is a collection of some of his pieces from those days. Already remarkable are his sense of movement, his sense of invention, his sense of style. The title story of this collection foreshadows frighteningly such later novels as The Crack and Wakes and The Midwich Cuckoos, with its suggestion of time where man is no longer the dominant creature on earth. And the last lunarians and derelict of space show how well he researched his material long before spaceships had struck out for the moon and the idea of interplanetary travel had become commonplace. This is truly another fascinating piece of evidence of John Wyndham's remarkable talent as seer and storyteller. So yeah, these are all copyright during the 1930s and were originally published in like pulp magazines. And it's kind of cool that they're in this like pulpy edition almost of, uh, is, is it Sphere? Coronet Science Fiction published this one. Very short, small print and like cheap paper and stuff. So I like this little exchange here. Um, but what's the good of his ever having lived if it all finishes this way? What is the use of life? Perhaps man came to a glorious finish, fulfilled his destiny and vanished from the earth. He had to leave the earth sooner or later. At least he has not been compelled to linger on a globe which is drifting into senile decay. It doesn't look decaying to me. Well, this was in the 1930s. I think it is now more obvious that it is decaying. We get a use of the word wonderingly which I can't stand. There is no need for that. Right, let's move on to Derelict of Space. And uh, so in this one, a captain is, as you can tell from the title, he's uh, holding this derelict and he's inspecting the cargo. The captain looked half elated, half dubious, as he listened to the radio operator's message. If the cargo mentioned was in any quantity, it looked as if we should net something like a record salvage payment, if we could get it home. Gold, he muttered, and Gannywood. There's some, ga there's some sense in Gannywood, at least it's useful. But gold, what's the good of that? Can't use it for anything. Except for money, I said. He looked at me contemptuously. Nobody's used gold as money for God knows how long. You never see it except it's pretty near useless and yet they're forever digging it out of mines all over the system. And what for? Just to take it to earth and bury it somewhere where no one ever sees it. Then they all look bright and pleased and say their credit's gone up. Damn nonsense, I call it. Trying to get gold from one planet to another has cost more lives and money than anything else in space work. Uh, we get this note, which again, bearing in mind this is written in the 30s, and this is like something you see in sci-fi films today. In space, there is no subjective difference between travelling at 7 miles a second or at 1 mile an hour. Acceleration is what you feel, and an increase of a few feet per second is negligible in practice. We get a quote here. It was a relief to all of us to hear that. It is a funny thing that for most men, the whitest conscience is no protection from some apprehension in the presence of the police. We get a bit where someone's accused of being Jewish because of an anti-Nazi plot, and he says, but I'm not Jewish. And, he, and they say, well, you could commit an anti-Nazi plot, so you might as well be. We get a reference to Ethereum, the lightest known gas. I mean, I know Ethereum as a, as a cryptocurrency. I don't know if it is also a genuine gas. I would have to look that up. We get this sort of pretty troubling line here in the story, Child of Power. If they had big heads and thought different from other people, they'd be freaks. A big head's a freak, same as a bearded woman. I've seen him at Blackpool. A, man, a man's the same as the rest of us, or he's a freak, stands to reason. Moving on to the last Lunarians, a, a society is discovered on the moon, and they find some dead people who aren't really dead, basically. Uh, I like, quite like this little line. We looked down upon the moon man, noticing his almost unbelievable chest development, remarking his brown pigmentation and the Mongolian slant of his eyes quite racist, observing that he was a little shorter than the shortest of us, and telling one another that he was brassophallic, classifying him. If any one of us happened to notice that the lips were drawn back in a smile, he did, he did not mention it. Of what interest to a scientist is a dead man's smile? Now they just prefer to call things mon mongoloid or whatever. So those about all the notes that I had for this book. Overall I thought it was okay, it was fairly forgettable to be honest, but then it is his early work, so you can kind of forgive it for that. Uh, over overall, I did enjoy it, I guess. I'd give it like a pretty weak 3.5 out of 5. I think I downgraded it to 3 for Goodreads, because I can't do a half star, but for the purposes of this, 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Wanderers of Time by John Wyndham, writing as John Bainan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye